I was literally born on a junkyard. And on that junkyard, I saw so many magical things, experienced so many magical adventures, and found so many magical treasures. I was astonished to see how many things in perfect condition were being thrown away, whether intentionally or not. Items such as books, toys, clothes, electronics, even video games. Now, those were my favorite. I mean, what seven-year-old boy wouldn't be excited about video games? And my father, he would call these findings goodies. So every time I went to work with him, it was a new adventure to find more goodies. You know, growing up, I never realized the importance of a junkyard and how it played a significant role in the waste recycle chain. You see, rather than these goodies ended up in the trash, they were granted second life by being sold, by being re-gifted to someone who would find appreciation for them, or by ending up in the hands of a curious seven-year-old. You see, my father had owned one of the largest junkyards in the New York metro region, and it was there where I saw the problem, but I didn't see the solution until I reached college. It was in my DNA to study environmental issues, but it was the creativity that I learned as a kid roaming around that junkyard that helped me understand the solution. But what is the problem? We are facing a serious waste epidemic on a global scale. And as complex as this problem seems, there exist simple solutions. I began to understand this concept of thrifting and how important it was to people in need, but never did I realize it was reducing our carbon footprint by minimizing the growth of landfills. But why is it so important to care about landfills? Every environmentalist under the sun has their reason, but the main reason why it's so important is because we no longer have a place to store our trash. We used to have a good thing going on with China for the past 20 years where they would take our trash, recycle it, and remanufacture more goods. But after they implemented the national sword policy and closed their doors, which they rightfully are entitled to, the world is scrambling to find a solution. But why did they close their doors? Well, these landfills were significantly polluting their air and making their citizens sick. On top of that, landfills produce a greenhouse gas called methane, which is 23% more potent than CO2 and a major contributor to global warming and climate change. There are many that don't believe in global warming or climate change. They say it's a hoax, that it's one of the biggest scams in history. But the truth is, many of us have our blinders on and are afraid to take it off as if it were a scene out of Bird Box. But how can this be when we are experiencing the effects of it? Are we not experiencing stronger heat waves? In July of this year, Alaska, which is renowned for its tundra climate of frost and snow, reached a record-breaking 90 degrees. Are we not experiencing stronger hurricanes and heavier precipitation? I spent my New Year's in Puerto Rico repairing the roofs of the victims affected by Hurricane Maria, so I know firsthand the damage that is being done. So how can people believe that this is not happening? I'll tell you why. Very often, we may know the truth, but after being berated with false facts, we tend to start believing in misinformation. It's time we shape up, because time's ticking, and we don't have much left. Today, I'm going to share with you three methods that would help provide innovative solutions to our waste epidemic. And the first one is multidiscipline collaboration. During my time at Farmingdale State College, I was lucky enough to be blessed with the opportunity to participate in what is called the Innovation Challenge. Now, the Innovation Challenge consisted of a variety of students that were meticulously paired with other students from various disciplines such as mechanical engineering, graphic design, computer programming, business management, bioscience. And we were tasked with finding a solution to a real-world problem. And in this case, it was the waste epidemic. And at the same time, we also had to create a viable, scalable, financially feasible business model. What I had experienced was miraculous. The abundance of ideas that were being generated was unbelievable. We're talking waste conveyor belts integrated with AI to properly sort waste and recyclables, sewage converted into biofuel, the repurposing of gray water for sprinklers, and many, many more. It was so amazing to see what can be accomplished when different views are brought together for a collective goal. I, for one, am grateful for this competition because it influenced me to become an advocate on environmental protection and it helped validate my eco-friendly company, Scrap It, which makes the concept of circular economy more attainable. 
Usually people will say that it's up to the scientists to come up with solutions to our problems, but they are just one component in the grand scheme of things. See, it requires a multifaceted network of minds with different points of views, because if we were just to leave it up to one group of people to solve our problems, they'd be limited in terms of solutions. It'd be like looking at the problem from one dimension. But when we add a separate group with a separate mindset, something interesting begins to happen. And the solution begins to take form and becomes slightly more complex. And of course, the more points of views that you add, the more complex the solution becomes, resulting in more possibilities. The second solution that I would like to share with you today is called circular economy. Now, circular economy is an alternative way to how we use and consume products and services. Instead of taking, making, and disposing, we would repurpose what was used and allow it to be reused again and eventually recycled. You see, we would take the linear way of how we've been doing things and close the loop in order to reduce and minimize waste. This, in my opinion, would really help solve the waste epidemic because rather than placing a Band-Aid on the problem, we're solving the underlying issue, which is the process, the mindset of how we do things. See, normally we would act and worry about the consequences later, but instead we would take into account the end result and let that guide us on our decisions. My father used to say to me, prevent is better than cure. But with a circular economy, we could prevent instead of worrying about a cure. Very often we normally think of ourselves and not our fellow neighbor. But if we were to become, if we were to change our behavior and become more compassionate, we would think of ways we could give what we don't need to our fellow neighbor who would greatly appreciate it. Now this circles back to the concept of thrifting, which I had mentioned earlier. You see, the idea of thrifting is rather unique because it doesn't just apply to clothes and furniture, but can apply to energy, fuel, and water. And as I had shared with you earlier, the students of Farmingdale developed brilliant ideas of how we can do so. But thrifting has been around for ages, but we've simply neglected and forgotten it. We have allowed society to make us look down on it. We have allowed society to make us look down on our hand-me-downs. I remember growing up, this was a way of life. If our sibling or relative had clothes or items they, that they no longer needed or wanted, it was passed on to the next generation. I used to wear my hand-me-downs with pride. It wasn't until kids at school started to make jokes about it where I started to feel insecure and ashamed. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. So what do we do? We hop on the bandwagon and demand all new clothes and all new items. We've been programmed to overconsume and disregard the after effects. And as we are approaching the eminent truth that our resources are finite, many of us are still in a daze and just living for today. However, I'm still optimistic that we will prevail even though the future may be dark. Dr. Miles Moreau once said, when we are under the biggest pressure, that is when our minds is normally the sharpest because our mind will start to think of things that it hasn't thought of before. And we are beginning to see sparks of innovation spurring up throughout the world, especially in this day and age where millennials are beginning to take charge of how we treat our planet. But we still have a long way to go. These innovations and solution concepts are great, but it requires something more than that. It requires our participation. It requires us to become more passionate about saving our world. It requires us to come together and think more creatively and collectively as a unit. It requires us to simply just speak about it. The third method that I'd like to share with you today is to just speak about it. Like, how many of you heard about the China's national sword policy? How many of you knew about the effects of landfills on climate change? How many of you knew that simply speaking about it would help save the world? You see, people don't know what they don't know. And by sharing news and innovation, it would, help share, it would help make this subject go viral. But why not make a meaningful cause go viral? Imagine the amount of difference it would make. Imagine the amount of goodies that can be recirculated. To be honest, never have I thought, coming from a junkyard, that I'll be here on stage advocating for eco-sustainability. But here I am. There is hope for our future, but it all begins with the actions we take today. So collaborate with one another. Think of wild ideas. Be kind and share what you don't need so that someone else in need may benefit. And before you throw that trash in the item, before you throw that item in the trash, 
Take a second to think of how it could be reused. One last thing that my father used to say to me is that a wise man provides for his children's children. And as I am entering into the realm of fatherhood, there's nothing more that I would rather see than to see a bright future where my children's children and your children's children can still call Earth their home. Thank you.